evolution was first proposed in 1997 by the scientific collective Boys to Men. Since then, it has gone on to become the most accepted theory on the changing of species over time and the origin of new species. One benefit of a better understanding of evolution is more accurate taxonomic groupings of closely related species. But not in magic. 261 creature types, and yet wizards still refuses to release a comprehensive biological taxonomy, outlining how they all relate to each other. Maybe it's just a combination of my academic stress and the fact that I currently have a fever, but it looks like I'm gonna have to be the one to step in and do this. Join me as I taxonomically organize every creature type in magic. No, I have very little experience in biology. Why do you ask? Okay, you know when I said every creature type five seconds ago? Join me as I taxonomically organize every creature type in magic. That was a lie. I'm making some cuts. First off, we're starting off with the 261 current official creature types as given by the comprehensive rules. This mainly excludes two categories. The first is obsolete creature types. I chose not to include them because Uncharist Vaughn is both the beginning and end point of evolution, and to attempt to classify him would be to attempt to classify the universe itself. The other category I excluded is creature types from unsets because I simply refuse to speculate on how one evolves into a gamer. Next, I'm cutting 43 class types. Despite what your marketing major roommate might tell you, your job is not the same thing as your species. I'm also removing 26 creature types that are inherently artificial. These species were created by people and then given life through magic or technology, or otherwise unable to reproduce. Some artifact creatures like Blink Moth seem to be naturally occurring, so I'll keep them. Types like Gargoyle are mostly an artifact creatures, but are also in a good number of regular cards, so I'll include them too. I'm also keeping angels and other mana construct creatures for reasons I'll get into later. While we're here, I want to take a moment to complain about the Dreadnought creature type. A Dreadnought is a type of ship. Why is it a creature type? It only appears on a single creature that could easily be a Worm, Helion, Serpent, or anything along those lines. Next up to be cut are 15 creature types that are more of a condition than a species. These are creatures that have become undead, contracted a disease, or been warped by some outside force. Also not removing spirits. While many are the dead version of something else, a solid amount are unique beings. My unnecessary complaint for this category is why are Greyborn not just zombies? They're multicolored and they have haste, so do multiple zombie tokens. Next, I'm discarding seven creature types that are just a body part or a developmental stage of another creature. These may be trying times, but I am unfortunately unable to offer you an egg because it's not how taxonomy works. A baby human is not a different species from an adult. Nor do you become a new species just for being really old. Mick Jagger is still a regular human, presumably. I'm excluding another five D&D creature types, which have not yet been shown to exist in Magic Canon. For one, Kithkin and Halflings are the same thing, so I don't know how I'd represent that. And the Lord of the Rings set will almost certainly bring in hobbits. Let's move on. Finally, seven more creature types are going because they're too broad to meaningfully classify. Beasts can be anything from mammals to reptiles to amphibians. Chimeras are combinations of literally any animals. Gods are pretty much anything except big. That leaves us with 158 creature types that are actually classifiable. We can start with the 65 that are easiest to place since they're real. I have gone ahead and adapted an extremely simplified version of a real life taxonomy by removing everything not relevant to magic. If a classification only has a single creature type in it, I have simplified the taxon to just that creature type. For example, wombats are the only marsupials in magic for some reason, so they're standing in for all marsupalia. Shout out to Mustelidi, the best represented family in magic this side of the Umazawas. Also, I'm astounded that caribou have been forwarded into elk like every other deer variant. For the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to assume that only species with creature types exist. Every creature type from this point forward must be tied into the existing taxonomy, so I'm going to speculate on how fictional life spun off from real life. These next creature types are ones that are pretty close to something real. Drakes look remarkably like pterosaurs, which are considered dinosaurs in magic, so I'd say that drakes are an offshoot of dinosaurs. Drakes and dragons are said to be cousins, so that would make them descended from dinosaurs too. The similarity between the two types has even been noted in universe. Now I know that's been traditionally said that the dragons were created by the Ur dragon, and I'm not saying that's not true. Maybe the story of the Elder Dragons hatching from eggs spawned from the Ur dragon's wings and falling through massive storms as meteors is a metaphor for evolution, intended for an audience that lacked modern scientific understanding. Canonically, worms are the descendants of loser dragons who had their wings removed. You know it's also essentially a loser dragon with no wings? A hydra. Serpents look pretty identical to worms, so I'll say they're a descendant of worms that pulled a whale and went back to the ocean. 
Speaking of worms, let's talk about worms, with an O. The intended difference is that worms with a U are reptilian vertebrates, while worms with an O are segmented invertebrates. Let's ignore the times they seem to have gotten it backwards and go with intent. Helians are very similar to the worms with an O, to the point that I don't really understand why they're different creature types. Let's say they're related. Going back to dinosaurs, Kavu and Lorgois are both big reptilian creatures, so they're dinosaur offshoots too. Unicorns are a cousin of horses. Horses are closely related to rhinos, which have horns, so I guess it makes sense. Sapolines are interesting because they combine both plant and fungus features. I posit they're actually a combination of organisms with a mutualistic relationship. Therefore, they'd be descended from both the plant and fungus types. The creature type that magic gremlins most resemble is pangolins, so I'd say that's their source. Kirin are flying elk. Lycids are pretty leech-like in structure and feeding habits, so let's say they're related. Fresh wags look like cats, so they're probably part of that lineage. Spikes are very slug-like, so put them as a descendant. Pests look like even spikier spikes, so they might be a further evolved version. Oozes look kind of like jellyfish. There are a number of mythical creatures that are just angrier versions of real ones. Basilisks are angry lizards. Phoenixes are angry birds. Kraken are angry octopuses. Yeti are angry apes. Speaking of apes, let's place some of magic's abundant humanoids. There are a number of very human-like creatures in magic. For example, elves are close enough that they and humans can have children together. I'd put humans, elves, giants, archons, cores, and vertican under the genus Homo. Cyclops are a descendant of giants that evolved to only have one eye for some reason. I put Kithkin as an offshoot of humans, as this is the case with their inspiration, the hobbits of Middle Earth. For what it's worth, Magic has an article where they talk about how legally distinct hobbits and Kithkin are, but uh, they probably wouldn't feel a need to do this if they weren't essentially the same thing. What's interesting is that Kithkin are shorter than humans, but taller than dwarves. I suggest that they are a step in the process known as insular dwarfism, where species living in small environments such as caves, mountains, valleys, or islands evolve to be smaller over time. Coincidentally, these are all places that Magic's dwarves are known to inhabit, so they are likely the next step in this process. Next is the even smaller gnomes. As evidence, the single canon non-artifact gnome in Magic is shown living a very dwarven lifestyle, filling a similar niche to its ancestor. We'll round out this section with the placements that I'm least confident about. So, in magic, a number of eyes have tentacles or tentacle-esque appendages, and some real-life squids have one eye much bigger than the other. So clearly, some of magic squids lost the smaller eye, and the bigger eye grew so much that now encompasses most of the creature. It could happen. Finally, slivers and night stalkers look surprisingly similar, so they're probably related. And the species that they most resemble is a bird's? Let's go with that. Next, I want to talk about a concept called convergent evolution, a process where unrelated species independently develop similar features. You may be familiar with the example of carcinization, where multiple species independently evolved crab-like traits. I propose that there is a similar process in the magic multiverse wherein multiple species have independently evolved bird-like features. I should call this process flipping the bird. Fairies evolved from gnomes, becoming the smallest species in that evolutionary line. Angels came from humans. The mana thing is a metaphor. Pegasi came from horses, then evolved into the even more bird-like hippogriffs. Hippos led to photogifts. Griffins evolved from cats. Finally, cockatrices evolved from the winged quaddles of the snake type. Next, we have the illustrious goblin lineage. Goblinage. I would say that goblins are an ape variant. Ever seen a shaved chimpanzee? Basically identical. Orcs are just big goblins. And orgs are a hybrid of orcs and ogres, suggesting that ogres are also closely related. Ogres and trolls are pretty indistinguishable in magic, so they're probably related too. Oofs, atogs, kobolds, and hags are also very goblin-esque, with the points of difference being hairiness, hairlessness, smallness, and girl, respectively. Now for my most controversial statement. Devils, demons, imps, and azra are related to goblins. Devil, that's just another big goblin. Imps are devils that flip the bird and developed wings. The only difference between an ogre and a demon is lighting, so I think they're related. Azras are said to have demonic ancestry as well. Speaking of Azra, there's another example of convergent evolution common in magic. Almost every species, given enough time, will eventually develop human-like traits. I call this process leashingification, because no matter what species you are, it will make a man out of you. All the Leonin and Loxodon type creatures are examples of this, but as they retain their original beastal types, I won't be talking about them. A leashingified fish, that's a morfolk. Ox, minotaur. Or in flipping the bird also applies, lamasu. Both being in effect for cats led to the sphinx. When only leashingification occurred, the manticore arose. 
Helmorids evolved from crabs, and cephalids from octopuses. Goat, satyr. Horses were lachingified twice, leading to both centaurs and noggles. Lizards also had two of these evolutionary splits, this time resulting in sorcars and lamias. Both nagas and gorgons evolved from snakes, and both sirens and harpies came from birds. Dragons developed into viachino. That one is confirmed, as is moonfolk having rabbit-like traits. Plants developed into treefolk and dryads, depending on the intensity of the leachingification. Oozes developed into two humanoid forms, shapeshifters and germs. Some germs specialized into pinchers. Call me Pharaoh Amos I, because I'd like to declare a new kingdom. A taxonomic kingdom, that is. The Kingdom of Rock. It's not as cool as it sounds. Basically, it's a place to put all the organic, yet metallic or rocky creature types. Specifically, blink moths, bringers, gargoyles, and sliffs. You may ask, hey, aren't you just arbitrarily placing a bunch of only loosely connected species in a category because you don't know where else to put them? And my answer to that is, yes. And also, what are you going to do about it? If real biologists get to make waste basket taxons, why can't I? Speaking of creature types, they don't know where else to place. Let's finish with one more new kingdom, the ephemeral. This kingdom covers all creature types which lack full tangibility. It can be further divided into four categories. Firstly, we have the poorly understood Odrazi, who naturally inhabit the formless blind eternities. Next, we have the spirits, creatures composed of energy. Degen are said to be a variety of spirit, and Afrit are further said to be a variety of Degen. Then we have the elementals, which are made of, wait for it, elements. Nymphs and Aetherborns are both Leishingified elementals. Finally, we have Incarnations, which are the embodiment of a concept. They evolved into three further creatures, each representing a specific thing. Nightmares represent nightmares, avatars represent another being or power, and illusions represent an idea. The only source of orb tokens is an illusion, which led me, after a great deal of time, to decide that orbs are a descendant of that type. That's right, I have literally pondered the orb. And here we have it the complete Magic the Gathering taxonomy, except for all of those creature types that I didn't include. But other than that, complete. Why did I do this? If you like this madness, please like and subscribe to help me out. Are there any placements that you would do differently? Let me know below. And please don't get too mad at me if you're actually knowledgeable on the subject. I tried my best. Excuse me, there is someone at the door. I've been indicted by the state of Tennessee for teaching dragon evolution.